Hey everyone, Manuela Marcajani from Eisenberg Skin Care. Welcome to our channel, a channel where we talk about skin, all things skin. Skin care, skin ingredients, ages and stages of skin aging. I am a cosmetic chemist and a scientist and a formulator. I've been working in the skincare industry for over 35 years. And I started out on my journey by having really bad problematic skin. So I'm hoping that between my experiences and my education and where we are today, I'm able to provide you with some useful information for your skin that pro proves interest and maybe even helps guide you to have a much easier way of it than I did growing up. Anyway, today we're going to talk about hormonal aging um, and hormonal skin care. So what is hormonal aging? Hormonal aging is like this catch-all phrase. It's becoming much more common now. When we started looking at um, hormonal aging 30 years ago, we were looking at it because when you go through menopause, you start to get hot flashes, your skin gets a little prickly, um, it gets really flush and red, and all of a sudden you start to notice jowls, right? That was like, ah, menopause, menopause skin. And people didn't want to talk about it, and it was very interesting. I remember, you know, nobody wanted to talk about it because they used to say, you're in skincare, so you can't talk about diseases. And I was like, Aging is not a disease. Menopause is not a disease, it's a stage. So let's like talk about it the way we should talk about it. Let's discuss it as part of, you know, if you're lucky, you live long enough to be going through all of these stages, right? Right, so hormonal aging is, you know, 45, 50, 55, 60. In that kind of range is where it can start because some people, you know, starts a little bit early in some a little bit later in others. But what's happening is you're going through menopause. And when you're going through menopause, your estrogen levels go down. Other hormones start to be a little bit more out of whack. And when your estrogen levels go down, your collagen suffers greatly. Your skin lipid content goes down tremendously because these hormones, these fats, they provide a lot of skin lipid. That provides a lot of buoyancy and elasticity and it provides a lot of resilience and strength. And a lot of that goes away, right? So what happens is you start to notice your skin is rougher, it's drier, it's much more temperamental, it's not so happy, it doesn't behave so very well. Um, and these are all uh, signs of hormonal aging. You'll also notice with hormonal aging, you'll start to notice it's uh, not just the face, you'll start to notice the neck and the chest area as well. The skin quality becomes more paper-like, more prickly. So what do we do with hormonal aging is we start to look at different ingredients, right? So we're starting to look at ingredients that will increase skin lipid content. We want things that are going to boost those skin lipids. You've lost a lot of fat underneath your skin. If you've gotten a little bit more hollow with hormonal aging, your skin has become thinner and drier and more prickly. So because we literally can't take fat and stick it back underneath the skin, with skincare you can't do that. I mean, you can do that with procedures. But what we want to do with skincare is we want to introduce the good fats. So we want to introduce the skin lipids, increase your skin lipid content. We like to utilize things like neodermal. We like to use things like soy symbiosomes um, because these are like phytosterols. And these fats are really good. They have a really great adhesion to the skin. And when we're adding them, they create volume they create lubricity, if you will. They're going to create um, conditioning for the skin. And that's gonna help make the skin a little bit stronger, less prickly, much more vibrant, a bit thicker as well, and a bit more buoyant. And this is gonna help bring back that memory to the skin where you see a lot of, not only do we have memory loss when we're, when we're going through menopause, but your skin almost forgets to bounce back. And this is because of the, the decrease in the skin lipid content. I also think that with hormonal aging, a really good thing to look at is a stronger antioxidant as well to really protect the skin and the lipids of the skin. And that again, to me, the, my go-to is uh, glutathione and more specifically the glutathione with the growth factors. Very important for hormonal aging. So with hormonal aging, what do we want to do? We want to we have to understand that the skin is more sensitive, so your cleanser should be a milder, milkier cleanser. You need to boost the hydration for sure. You've got to address that rough, sandpapery-like texture and um, you know the um, prickliness of the skin. So you want to increase the skin lipid content and the memory of the skin and fortify it that way, and really use a high-level or good 
antioxidant like a glutathione with a growth factor because again that growth factor we want to increase the density of the skin and the buoyancy of the skin and finally I really again I'm going to go to my go-to which is going to be a retinol a retinol uh, sorry retinol um, I really like again the simple science one utilizing the low dose retinoid with the azelaic and niacinamide and this is really great for hormonal aging as well because it's not too late it's never too late to stimulate that collagen right even with the collagen peptide stimulate that collagen and rebuild yes the quality of your collagen has changed your metabolism has changed your skin is a little cooler as well even because of our circulation has changed but it's not too late it's about the diligence, right? It's about setting up a routine, utilizing the right ingredients and the, and, the right, and the right products, and doing that every day, a little bit every day, and you're gonna be able to really deal with this hormonal aging gracefully and have skin that's behaving properly because it tends to break out a little bit, not break out, it, it goes everywhere. And if you are, that's one, one good thing to add to this, if you do find that you're also breaking out with hormonal aging, go with exactly what you need. Um, um, and at that stage for me is going to be an azelaic acid booster and a beta hydroxy because you want something to cut the sebum part and then boost that cell turnover and keep that skin nice and dense. And I find that that combination, the beta hydroxy in the daytime, along with the azelaic is really great for hormonal aging breakout. I hope this has, information has been useful. I look forward to your questions and comments. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Thank you so much for tuning in.